everybody. Jay Kilroy here. <clears throat> uh, getting ready to do a little project in the shop. Um, uh, before we get started on that, got some tooling acquisitions I wanted to share with you. Um, off of eBay, I got this fantastic Ames, I guess it's pronounced Ames, A-M-E-S, Ames dial indicator. It's a tenth indicator uh, with a four tenths range and uh, it's huge. So here, look. Right. Uh, you, everybody's heard me joke about uh, being able to read my large print uh, machinery handbook. Well, this is basically the large print version of an indicator. Uh, it's a fabulous piece. Um, it clocks at, at 9 o'clock, so you can preload to noon for your zero to uh, do your work. Um, it's got a really big face here. This, where's my. That is ticking me off. Where is my rule? Hold on. There we go. So the face is two and a half inches in diameter. So this is easy to read. Uh, it's, it's extremely well made. This is, this is chrome plated steel. It's heavy. Um, and uh, it was $9.95. Um, if you look for a Starrett, and this is every bit of Starrett quality here, uh, made in the same city, right? Waltham, uh, Massachusetts, I think is the same city. But um, if you look for a stereo like this type, you're going to pay $120, $140, whatever. Uh, you're not going to get $9.99, right? Great part. There's a lot of brands out there that people don't think of a lot. Ames is one of them. Uh, Lufkin is another brand that, that tends to go cheap. It's also a quality, uh, vintage, American-made tool. Uh, Shear uh, Tomiko is... Uh, fabulous American-made brand that uh, the government purchased a lot of. There's a lot of surplus, so they're cheap. What else did we get? Um, yes, a little Noga goodness. This is a Noga 1022 um, indicator arm for use in the spindle. Um, the difference between this and the 1018 is the 1022 has the universal end. Here's the universal end, right? It rotates so you can have uh, either a 3 8 or a quarter inch stem size um, held in here. It uh, does have the all metal clamp and the adjustment on the end. Um, typical Noga quality, which is fantastic. And um, paid a lot more for that than I did for that little Ames indicator, but it is well worth it. And the other new part for the shop here is also from Noga. And this is this, just a just a standard Noga base. And um, you know, <clears throat> people talk about uh, there's a lot of discussion about buying. Uh, American-made tools, or Chinese tools, or Japanese tools, or certain brands, high-end brands versus discount brands. This is one area where discounts don't make sense, right? Um, a Noga like this, this is a, a, what's the part number on here? This is the Noga 71003. So I think this is just kind of their standard indicator arm, again, with the universal end the metal clamp, the universal adjustable end. Um, you know, this is going to set you back a hundred plus uh, for something like this. You can buy a discount item for thirty dollars, um, and this is not one of those situations where the discount is ninety-five percent of this or ninety percent of this, or it's it's not worth the extra money. This is one of those places where it's worth the extra money. Um, it's solid as a rock, right? So, uh, watch this. See, you got 
mobile twist. I'm not twisting hard. This thing's solid, right? I mean, I, I'm wiggling my whole table with this, right? So this is not one of the areas where saving money makes sense. Buy good indicator holders, right? Good holders like this. Use an indicator for what? You get a quality indicator, you get a uh, Tessa test or uh, Interapid or a Starrett or Michitoyo. So you've got a $200 in test indicator, right? Um, well, uh, and you're trying to measure extremely fine numbers with this stuff. You're talking about a tenth indicator, this very sensitive instrument, and then you're going to strap it to what? Right? Piece of noodle, uh, you know, wet noodle. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. Um, it's, um, you know, uh, it is not good. It's, it's foolish economy at that time. Um, so buy good quality indicators. Uh, they, there are indicator stands that even cost more than these. There's European uh, hydraulic lock indicator stands that cost an absolute fortune, six, seven hundred dollars. Um, do I think that is worth it over at Noga? No, I don't, because I, I don't think that there is really any better uh, for the money uh, than a Noga. So this is not an area where you want to save money. Uh, if you're frustrated, you're having trouble um, getting good use for your indicators, getting good center or, you know, centering up material under the spindle or centering stuff in your forward jaw chuck. If you're having trouble doing it properly, if, you're, if your results aren't what you expect, this might be the reason. So uh, invest in good indicator holders and you will um, thank yourself later. Oh, what else? Um, so I had a job last week boring job. So I just took just the slightest amount of video, but it was doing pins for a bulldozer. The only thing with more pins than a bulldozer might be a front end loader. Uh, but bulldozers are full of pins and they wear out. And um, they're notoriously poorly maintained. So uh, I had to make some pins, a few pins for uh, a guy's bulldozer. Now I got a bunch more to make, right? Because he's totally rebuilding this thing. So I want to get tooled up to. Um, make this boring and repetitious work, which is what it is, let's, let's be honest, uh, making pins is not exciting, but um, it makes money, right? So um, I want to get tooled up to be able to make these pins in as quick and an easy manner as possible, cut my labor time down, increase my profit margin, and uh, get it out of the shop you know so that so that I can do something more interesting and uh, uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some V jaws uh, to hold these pins uh, in my milling vise uh, so that um, I can speed this deal up I did the original ones that I did in my um, indexer and it works fine uh, but uh, doing it this way in the V-Jaws is going to be faster and hopefully you'll see why. So we're going to go from here to the computer and we're going to um, uh, go over a little CAD work. I've drawn up the V-Jaws because remember better drawings make better parts which is kind of code for saying 
if I don't have drawings, I'm going to make mistakes, right? Uh, so uh, we're going to go to the computer. We're going to look at the CAD. I'm going to make the drawings available in my Dropbox links down below. And um, then we're going to uh, start making these blocks. Uh, and uh, I also want to give a shout out to my buddy Adam. Uh, down in Florida and Gill. Say hi to you guys. See how y'all are doing. And i uh, been enjoying some of your videos. Uh, uh, Adam's been posting a lot of good Facebook posts as well. Had some really interesting work. Um, you know, so make sure you check out his channel, ABOM79. Uh, of course, I've been following Tom Lipton and uh, Keith Finner. Uh, I, you know, just kind of my standby solid uh, YouTube views when I want to sit down and just uh, uh, absorb a little uh, information and uh, that's uh, Ox Tool Co and uh, Turn Right Machine Works on uh, YouTube so make sure that you check those channels out if you haven't checked them out already. Chances are if you're here looking at my videos you already know about them but if you don't please go check it out. So let's get to the computer, let's look at some CAD work and then let's cut some metal. Alright guys and gals. Here is the um, V-Jaw as I've drawn it up. And what I started off with here is a set of four by two by six Monster Jaws off uh, eBay. Monster Jaws, uh, I, I believe they have a website as well. Um, which means I started off with a solid block of aluminum and soft jaw already uh, drilled uh, and counterboard for the vice mounting holes, so I just have this a uh, nice block. Um, I, you know, honestly, couldn't buy the material and make the part for the price that you can buy it, right? So, anyway, this is a great place to start. So, um, what you have here is um, uh, here's our V and the um, length of this side is just a touch over an inch, inch and a sixteenth. Um, so uh, we're not talking about a huge excavation here. Um, and let me uh, close that. Let me bring the pin in here. So this is the size of the pin. The um, Pin, I believe, is uh, uh, what is the diameter on that here? Ah, one and three quarter. There you go. Um, and they're just a bunch of little one and three quarter by four inch pins. They all have to be cross drilled, and I'll show you some pictures of the, of the process here in a second. They all have to be cross drilled, and uh, and then drilled and tapped in the end. So. Uh, this is what the jaw looks like. Uh, then what I'm going to have here, I've got a, a 3 8 by 16 uh, tapped hole in the end for a stop. And um, obviously there's the stop. Um, and uh, that will be held in by a little thumb screw. Uh, McMaster part number there. And um, uh, that'll allow me to index once I'm all set up, index properly and go to town. Not have to have any hurts. Of course, I need another jaw. There's two of these things. Um, so there you go, with that. And uh, you'll note that uh, in the middle here, I've got about an inch with that pin in place. Uh, gives me about an inch of free space. And um, so I've got uh, plenty of uh, room to throw a drill through there. The, the cross hole in these pins is for a 7 16 bolt, so not real big. And uh, I did a few other things while I was at it. Um, the, um, uh, let's see. Did a stop, which um, you see that right there. It's just another thumb screw that's uh, tapped into the face of the um, of the vice jaw, 
and there's one on each end and uh, the use for that may not be totally obvious you're thinking to yourself what do you need to stop for things in a vise um, why do you need to stop well there's other ways you can use this um, rather than just in your milling vise that I'm going to show you that uh, having these stops makes real handy you notice that I put the 3 8 inch holes on both ends and both jaws uh, so that you can use a stop on either end uh, and move, move around as needed so uh, this is our um, this is our assembly right here here's the drawing of the um, of the actual V jaw itself uh, produced from that model that we just saw so um, you're looking at the uh, all the views this is what I'm going to work on this will be available uh, down below as well the SolidWorks model in the uh, Dropbox in my Dropbox there will be a link down below for you to be able to download these so um, since we have a drawing let's print this out let's get over to the um, working area and let's start making some parts alrighty we got our two jaws our blank jaws Let me just this out the way in the shaper and we're getting ready to get set up with the tool bit here I got the um, hold on a second you can see the tool slide is kicked over to 45 degrees and the clapper is at a position where the workpiece will lift out of the cut and um, anyway this is the tool bit we're going to use right here this is a um, just a radius tool uh, you notice it doesn't have any side or back rake because we're going to cut on both sides we're going to cut this way and we're going to cut this way so this we can't really put side rake on it and with aluminum you don't really want a bunch of back rake because it can be kind of grabby so it's got <coughs> relief on the end here and on the outsides of the bit it's got a nice radius on there and uh, it's hand ground so let's get it mounted up get the shaper fired up let's start uh, cutting this v-notch Most of this side roughed out here, most of the waste all roughed away, so I'm, now I'm starting to cut down the face. The methodology here is cut in at a 45 to have a comfortable depth of cut and cut over. Come back, cut in, cut over. Come back, cut in, cut over. You keep working all this waste out, and once you get down to uh, where you have a nice face to work with, just start cutting down the face, cutting down the face until you come back to your scribe line. 
and just let the machine generate the angles for you. Got about maybe 20 thou left after this pass. And then I'm going to switch over to the other side and then start working on the uh, top side. Alright, I'm on my last pass down this face here. And it's about a 20 thousandths cut. And I'm really going to take it easy with the feed so I get a nice finish. And it's going to take a little bit, but I'm not going to make you sit through it. Hit the bottom there. Got a nice smooth surface finish there. Time to switch around and do the other side. Alright, there you go. There is our main V cut across the face there. right at an inch I could probably do another pass uh, on both sides to bring it down to that dimension but that looks pretty good so um, go ahead and uh, we'll get rearranged to um, start cutting the vertical v-notches here <laughs> 